This is an example of structural approach versus the reduced form approach to learning about causality. So both of these approaches are trying to learn about causal effects. And for a concrete example, imagine we're interested in a retirement pension formula for school teachers. Uh, so this is actually a question some colleagues of mine have done a series of research papers on and is uh, very policy relevant. Um, so there's these pension formulas that tell the teachers when they retire, um, they'll keep getting paid even though they're not working anymore. That's what a pension is. And then the formula is based on uh, how many years they worked at the school and um, things like that. And then there's also this sort of multiplier number in there um, that could be higher or lower. So the question is, how does that pension formula affect, in a causal sense, uh, teachers' retirement decisions? Um, and in particular, at what age they would retire. You know, will they retire at age 63, 64, 68, and so on. Um, so in terms of these two approaches, an example from the reduced form side might say, hey, there is this uh, change in... Uh, let's say the Missouri public school pension formula in 1998. Um, so there is this change it used to have in the formula, you know, the multiplier was some number and then they increased it to a different number. And the hope is trying to get some sort of comparison where you can isolate the effect just of that change. So in this case, you know, we could imagine trying to look at teachers uh, who were hired just before the change was made or hired just after the change um, in the hopes that maybe they're pretty much the same other than the fact that one of them has a different or that they have a different pension formula. So they're hoping that you get this comparison that's not literally randomized, right? They didn't have a lottery where they gave certain teachers one pension and other teachers another, but you're hoping it's as good as randomized. And then you can uh, sort of compare the groups accordingly. In contrast, for a structural approach, uh, what some of my colleagues have done is try to sort of build a more explicit economic model of teachers' retirement decisions. So you have some sort of model where the teacher you know, will retire if um, there's some, you know, formula where you're thinking about sort of the net present value of your future pension payments and your uh, utility from working and uh, you have, you know, some value function and you're trying to optimize this decision to for whether or not to retire. Um, of course, once you retire, you can't unretire, so they're trying to consider that. So it's trying to come up with this explicit economic model for teachers' uh, decisions and behaviors that includes the pension formula as part of that model. 
So there are sort of complementary advantages of these two approaches. Um, the reduced form uh, approach here uh, has fewer assumptions going into it. Um, you know, the structural approach has this model, which can be very nice, but if you misspecify it, so if you get it wrong, then um, maybe you could get results that are also uh, potentially misleading. So the reduced form doesn't have as many of those uh, modeling assumptions going in. Uh, it does still have this as good as randomized assumption, though, and it's also more limited in terms of what question it can answer. So there is this particular change to the policy or to the pension formula in this particular year. So we might be able to estimate the causal effect of that particular change. But then if in the future our, the policy we're considering is changing the formula to something else that we've never before seen historically, uh, we would sort of need to make assumptions at that point in order to extrapolate from the effects we estimated for the observed historical changes. Um, in contrast, the structural model, because it has this very rich model, economic model at the core, you can then plug in or sort of simulate all sorts of uh, counterfactual policies and uh, sort of run, you know, simulate what the what the teachers would decide to do in terms of retirement for a very wide variety of scenarios. Again, with the caveat that you are making um, some stronger assumptions, so your results potentially are sensitive to that.